Wednesday now, so what the week's looked like for you so far, and yeah, what today looked like in training. So today we've done jiu-jitsu. We had uh, Ashley Grimshaw taking the jiu-jitsu class, which is all of the pros. It's obviously no gi. Um, as you know, we don't fight with gis in, in the, the, the cage. So good rounds, tough rounds. You know, I've got all the uh, teammates putting it on me. Tomorrow we got MMA class. So that's going to be the last hard session of the week where, you know, it's, everyone's trying to take my head off. Uh, followed by boxing in the evening. And then Friday, we got MMA grappling. So that's where we're going to work a little bit more game plan stuff, you know, getting ready for my opponent, a um, little bit more specific. Yeah, make sure I'm firing off all cylinders and ready to knock this guy out. Did you see that nice video over here? <laughs> yep. Yes, I'm going to give you a black box today. I guess that's out the window. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give it to you. What, now? Yeah, so desperate. I need my black belt. Give me my black belt, eh? Can you just get a little alma plata maybe in July? What are we saying for that? Let me tell you something. Any trip comes, I'll be rear naked or dance. Okay. Yeah. I know this. I know how, I can see that, this, that, that, I yeah, see how this fight that. goes already in my head like a thousand times. It's front chokes in my ass. Yeah. But that's not worthy of uh, of the next guy. Done that already. Yeah, exactly. That's completed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's like excited. Like, cool. Actually, if you just shows me proper dominance, like yeah. Shit. <laughs> it's too high level black belt. <laughs> There's only one black belt, and it's me. But quite a lot of people have fights themselves. Does that sort of ramp up the intensity a little bit of camp? A little bit of the competitiveness maybe, everyone sort of fine tuning at the same time? Yeah, so a lot of my teammates are obviously very high level. You know, everyone's trying to become the UFC champion of the world. So, you know, sometimes it is like I've got a target on my back because people want to you know, test themselves against me, obviously being in the UFC, which is great for me. You know, I really want the, the guys coming up in the gym to try and put it on me. You know, there's nothing worse than coming in and having some easy rounds. So, you know, the fact that every time I come in, I know that all of my teammates are going to try and put it on me. That's uh, a great weapon in my arsenal. It makes sure my fitness there is, make sure that I'm, I'm hitting my peak performance. You know, if I can handle myself with the guys that are trying to take my head off in, in training, Come fight night when he tries to take my head off, you know, I'm used to that for the last eight weeks. So, you know, I'd like to think that a few of my teammates are going to be joining me in the UFC very soon. Why is that important to you as a fighter walking into the cage so you can look around and see someone that you can trust your life with? It's so important to trust, obviously, the coaches that you're with. Um, I won't mention names, but over the years, I have had coaches where they didn't have my best interest at heart. You know, they wanted the monthly money that you're paying them, and they wanted, you know, just to piggyback your fame, let's say. And they, you, you just, it's not a nice feeling when you know that. I know it is a business, but when you know that someone's purely just there for either your money or to get the fame off you, etc. It's not a nice feeling. So to have coaches that aren't there to earn the money, they're there generally to see you achieve your goals and follow your dreams, it's a nice feeling. Obviously my dad, you know, he's not interested in making money off me. He just wants me to follow my dreams. And I know that he hates me fighting. You know, it's not nice for my dad to be watching me uh, potentially getting my face smashed in by another guy and he's not able to do anything because he's outside of the cage. So now I can't draw down the middle because it, no. it's a small and I've been slipped off and you can hit her. We can't hit her. Hey, I'm not being funny. Might be Kung Fu. He's dropped every man in this gym with it, so Kung Fu. Speak to the guy that gave Hey! Kung Fu, Kenny. Pop the smurf. Big up. When you go, when you hit that area... What does that mean, not only to have him there with you and for him to actually know what you're going through, but to have him at the whole step of the journey, what's that like for you? Having my dad as a coach and a cornerman and, you know, if anything, he's my head coach, you know, he plays a huge role in my uh, mixed martial arts journey. Um, and the fact that he's my dad, I can trust my life with him, you know, so to have that is a big, an extra tool in, uh, in my arsenal. You know, obviously I trust my coaches. I have nothing but belief that they have my best interest at heart, but you know, who can you trust in more than your own dad? So, you know, having him there every step of the way is uh, is, is huge for me. Uh, I remember when I fought in Vegas and it was uh, the New Year's Eve card 
and I missed Christmas, but you know, having my dad there meant that I had my family there. So not only is it nice to have someone who has a high skill level in martial arts, it's also great to have someone who is there for me every step of the way. Well, we look at mixed martial arts and you've been doing this a while now, but what actually triggered it for you? How did you actually get into the sport? So for me, getting into the sport is a bit of a, a different one because I left school, I think I was 16. I was in carpentry, I learned that at college. I was in the building trade. I wanted to follow my uncle's footsteps because I earned, he was earning loads of money and didn't realise that I was no good at it. I hated it and I couldn't think of anything worse than being on a building site for the next 40 years of my life. So I was with my dad who was training at the time. You know, he was doing jujitsu. He's always, always done martial arts. And I thought, what? Well, you know, I always want to be an athlete. So what sport is there that you can start at the age of 16 and make a career out of? Because, you know, many sports, by the age of 16, you have to be pretty good at it. So I just thought to myself, you know, I've always been a fan of the UFC. I see people like Brad Pickett, Demetrius Johnson, who didn't start till they were in their early 20s. And I thought, you know, if they can make a living out of it, why can't I? And yeah, I was like a duck to water. You know, I loved it. And, you know, here we are now. So the main goal that I started MMA was because I wanted to be an athlete. And it's probably the most athletic sport I think there is in the world. Fell in love with it from the moment I went in the gym. And from that first session, this is what I uh, plan to do with my life. Kids these days, look, I'm going to have to do it in one. <laughs> you don't have the flick of a wrist, it's all about technique. What? I think this is basically a good time. Hey, Sim, Sim, you look good. Yeah. <laughs> what? Why am I not jumping? It's better. Three hours later. Fuck, jump. Come in. Larry Bird, isn't it? Larry Bird, isn't it?